Presets are the foundation of any photography business. And today we're gonna learn how to build our own preset so that you don't have to simply go out and buy them, but instead you can make your own personalized style. We're designing a wedding preset. And this is an extremely important part of everyone's lives. So when building a wedding preset, you wanna make sure that you're taking care of a lot of the skin tones and the colors within the image. Now, of course, style is subjective. So you do wanna make sure that you're entertaining your personal style, but you also wanna make sure that you're creating a style that your couples will love for years to come. This revolves around creating accurate skin tones and oftentimes making sure that many of the colors look somewhat accurate to what they were in real life. The first thing we need to do when creating our preset is determine the overall look we're going for. Many of us love that clean, classic, traditional look, and that's the look I'm gonna build today. This is gonna be a very versatile preset that'll work in many different lighting conditions and is gonna be easy to adapt and adjust image to image. To get started, the first thing I wanna do is figure out whether or not my typical shooting style is overexposed or underexposed. So when I bring my images into Lightroom generally, do I need to raise the exposure or decrease the exposure? Now in my case, on average, I'm about a stop or a stop and a half underexposed. So the first step for me is gonna be setting my exposure value where I'd like it to be. Now that my image has the exposure, the next important step is determining how much contrast I really want to retain in the image. Now contrast can be achieved in a couple different ways. We can do this through tone curves, which is slightly more complicated, or we can use our highlight, shadow, and contrast sliders to determine those overall values. To begin with, I'm gonna bring my highlights down. I love to retain the highlights and bring back as much of the bright spots in the image as I can. But now that I've done that, you'll notice that the image has become flat. So to compensate for this, I'm gonna raise my contrast just a little bit. And now that my contrast is raised, I'm noticing that my shadows seem to be getting a little bit too dark. So I wanna bring those up as well. And this is going to help me retain a lot of the darker segments of the image. Now, of course, with every slider's movement, we end up changing the overall look of the image. So you're gonna notice that now that I've brought my shadows up, yet again, I've returned to somewhat of a flat image. The contrast is no longer there that we added from before. But instead of raising the contrast this time, what I'm gonna do is actually lower my blacks. And the reason I'm lowering my blacks is because this is going to make the darkest part of the images just a little bit stronger. So it's going to retain all of the generally dark, but not the darkest spots of the images. That's the difference between our shadows and our black slider. The shadows is going to take care of that lower end, but not the lowest of low. Whereas the blacks is only gonna handle those darkest of dark segments of the image. So now I've achieved a baseline image. This is a very simple looking preset. Essentially, I've maximized all of the brightest spots of my images and the darkest spots of my images, creating a contrasty, bold look while retaining the original, simple, traditional look of the photo. And from here, I can actually tailor more sliders and change the overall look of the image and still retain the contrast. So for instance, if I wanted to get a little bit more of a film look, I can actually dive in to my HSL sliders and start tweaking some of the saturation, luminance, and hue values to shift the look of the overall image. So for this example, I'm gonna start with my greens. What I've done is simply tweaked my hue value for my greens to a plus 18. This has brought my greens to look a little bit more blue. As you can see, it's created a slightly different look while maintaining that original contrast, the image that we created. Now, of course, there are a multitude of sliders I can change to really adapt this look and make it my own. But as a starting point, being able to adjust those few sliders has really made a great starting place to build my own preset. Once I've got all of my baseline values determined and created my new preset style, all I have to do is simply head over to presets, click on the plus sign next to the preset logo, and click on create preset. And now it's gonna ask me all of the values I would like to save in my preset. You'll notice there's lots of checkboxes. And while you can check all, some people prefer to just check some of the most important values that they wanna apply to all images. So what this means is that you may not wanna check the white balance value because it's going to set a specific white balance on every single image. So for me, I'd rather leave the in-camera white balance and correct that individually than to have to adjust the preset's white balance that we created. 
So I'm gonna leave off the white balance and I'm gonna go ahead and check all of the other boxes because all of the other check boxes here are now part of my brand new style. The most important thing to remember is this is your photography business. So you wanna make the best preset for your company and you're gonna stand out from the crowd. Let us know in the comments what you came up with when you built your own preset.